welcome to the COVID special. Welcome, you're the first in. Welcome to my painting room. It's not the normal painting room I have. Normally I have a yellow wall, but I've changed it all around. We're all having fun indoors. I'm determined to have fun indoors. Determined. And here's the magpies. Got your brew. Said magpies, you've not got that name, but I always think magpies are always looking for birds. So is, is that me you're talking about? <laughs> Hawkeye, Mooney, I love a musical intro. Almost all my live streams that happen like this in, in chat form, I always start with a little bit of music. Um, that's just the way I like to do it. I wing these things, you know. If nobody asks me any questions or interacts, then all I do is sit here and play guitar and enjoy myself. Um, and I'm rarely sat just waiting for people. And, you know, if people have painting questions, then sometimes you might get it to music. Scotty of the North, Indominus, Madagar, hello. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know if some of you have seen me um, recent post... Apparently, I, I was going to move all these live streams to, to YouTube because I'm not limited by time and I don't have to twist the camera angle. Um, and I think the quality is slightly better on YouTube. I don't have to edit the video. I don't have to upload the video. A lot of the things are better about YouTube. Um, and I wanted, so I can, I can just stay there as long as, I, as long as I can, as long as I'm entertaining you guys and myself. Then while we're in this position of... Um, um quarantine then we, we we can just have a great time in you know a better time than we can here so i am still painting the mermaid on mordian i am and we do it a bit at a time you know i'm letting people keep up but i'm also doing it at my own um pleasures as well you know it's a i, I do all these videos out of love you know um and that's always the first the first reason we should be doing this hobby. You know, unless somebody's give you a bunch of money and you sign a contract, then that's a different thing. But I reckon cultivating love in those situations will always be better than cultivating a sense of, 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 of duty or obligation when you don't really want to be, you know, so so anyway, yeah, yeah, look blah blah blah. But you know, we might do a bit of that tonight, we might do a little bit tomorrow, we'll we'll see because Right now we're all a little bit socially distanced, you know. But like I said in, in the little video I put in my gallery just a second ago, we're not socially distanced because to be social is about how you interact on an emotional level. It's not physical touching because that can also be rape. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So when you think about it, this is social closeness. Here we are connecting right now. We're connecting through art, through music, through smiles, through a sense of camaraderie, through a sense of art and love. Um, and no social distancing at all. In this age of information, ignorance and distance is an actual choice. Um, and it's not, no longer about bodies, is it? No longer about bodies. Okay. Marty and Iyengard asks, is it hard to make a living as a commission painter? Depends how good you are, doesn't it? You know, depends on your reputation. Depends on your standard. Depends on your customer service. Depends on your painting ability. Are you good? Are you fast? Can you deliver? Because being good and being fast doesn't make give you a good work ethic. And all those are needed. All those are definitely needed. Now, the thing is, you can be a real poor standard painter, but if you have a great work ethic, you will build a great customer base. I guarantee it. 
you know next is are you charging right well if you're a fast painter then you can charge low and just smash it out you know so I would develop all aspects of painting to become a great commission painter I I, I can smash them out I could smash out a model in, in 10 minutes you know and I reckon you didn't enjoy looking at it so I can smash out an army in no time and I'm pretty much sure I could charge a good buck or two um, for that so would I struggle if I cared to do such a thing no I don't think I would I think I'd make um, quite a bit of money um, and still probably not be one of the more expensive commission painters out there um, though I think every commission painter other than the expensive ones are all actually undercutting themselves unfortunately um, so is it difficult that's not easy uh, to answer outside of just being me you know um, do I want to do it no I don't <laughs> so in that in that instance it's not so that, that suits me chestnut ink oh man it's been a long time since we've had chestnut ink I've got a couple of pots down there that I'm saving for a rainy day. But the thing is, we're saving things for a rainy day like that. You just end up never using them. Rob Watson, I uh, have a card. Yeah, that's just for you. Sons, long time no speak. Um, last time was probably War My World, wasn't it? I snuck up on you. Yeah. So well, weirdly, I like inside out normally. Like I'm sneaking up on people who are followers and fans of what I do. Normally, it's them sneaking up on me. Going, oh. <laughs> yeah. So here we all are rather uh, socially close through the medium of the internet. Isn't it beautiful when used as a tool for good instead of a tool of fear? Yeah. What do I think of the new Gasco rules? I've not read them. <laughs> Tell me where they are. List them for me. Um, yeah, I ain't got a clue. I'd look at them, but my mobile phone is in front of me here doing all this camera business, innit? Um, so yeah, there you go. Ah, right, no, right, yeah. See, this is the thing with you, mate, right? I get you mixed up with somebody else, and I've just remembered, and I said this to you last time, Billy Mumbles is who I was thinking. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you, you fecker, right? Because you just disappeared, and all I did was worry about you. Are you all right? Where are you living? Are you up around the north again? Tell me you're up around the north. If so, come and say hi. If not, come and say hi. Good course that as well, you know, it was good fun. But you were missed. Edmund Normal, I like your name. Hello. Neslo, 91. Hello. Um, yeah, Mr. J. Welsh, the nerd. What do I think of the new guys' school rules? Um, like I said, don't know. Working near Stockport. Right, well, I, I'm in Manchester City Centre, in Hume. Come and paint. Check out my hobby room, all right? Decided to dedicate an entire room in my house just to hobby. So here, right, y'all are getting a tour. In fact, 
you're coming off you're coming off the thing here we go guided tour of some but not all of my hobby stuff right here you've got the painting area up there you've got the uh the the, the original john blanche artwork which is eldrad ulfiwan and tommy the sewell um and the small picture by the way all right here's the painting area with various projects on you all will be very familiar with things like golden demons etc i say golden demons i've only got one that's all i need i'm happy with that in fact i didn't even need any for like billions of years um so that should teach you something about the value of demons um trinkets if you will as cool as it is to have one i'm incredibly grateful um, but it will never trump actually being and loving being a painter. Um, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I always got all deep and meaningful, don't I? But that's me, and I, I quite like it. Um, I don't think there's enough people being that way, I think, too. Anyway, I'm off I go again. I'm giving you a guided tour. Painting table. Funky tablecloth, which really is folded to in the wrong way. It needs to be folded different. There's a Lord of the Rings, Two Towers, Helm's Deep Gate. Um, there's all my paints in storage there, pure of them, all in colour order, paired in contrast so they're easy to spot, if that makes sense. Um, so, like, I don't have all my reds and browns in the th same pot together. I might have greens and purples in the same pots because they're easy to differentiate when you're looking for the, the colours you need. In the middle of my floor, you've got my new gaming board, which is what I'm making. It's a 5x4 gaming board. I am hand carving this, by the way. I am hand carving this. It's all sheets of MDF, right? And look, hand carving every bit of it with a craft knife and a ruler. And I'm creating little plastic card, little bomb holes and things like that. And I'm carving all these uh, little craters and cracked this, that and the other. So there's that. Uh, there's a futon for anybody that would like to stay. Uh, here's all the scenery I'm going to build. This is a lot of scenery, by the way. Yeah, so I've got all my Necromunda stuff there. I've got all the 40k Sector Mechanicus stuff there. Pure of it. Um, I'm going to do some Titanicus as well. Um, there's my guitar and the chair I teach people in. This is the uh, student's chair. Yeah, anybody that comes for lessons, you get to sit there. Classic art and vinyl. Mm -hmm, that's right. Um, spare lamp. Everyone needs a spare lamp. Right, here we go. Books I really enjoy mooching on about. When it comes to rules, I'm not really a rulesy guy, but I keep these all here for inspiration and background. More books of that same ilk. So let's go in closer. Imperial Knight Compilation. What a great book. The Art of Paul Bonner. Paul Bonner. Awesome. Right, if anybody doesn't own these books, by the way, I reckon you really should do. So, so why own the Imperial Knight Companion? Right, here's why you should own it. It's filled with background. And if background isn't informing your painting, then... You're just copying colours. It's as simple as that, really. Because if your models aren't inspiring a tale of some description, yeah, or aren't telling a story, even subtly, and subtly is generally best, um, then they're not really doing anything. They're just holding some paint. So, this is chock full of background. And great colour schemes, by the way. Paul Bonner. Yeah, uh, uh, an old school games workshop, great. Did a lot of orcs back in the day. Um, what else did he do? Um, did a lot of uh, pictures for t novels and um, Warhammer Fantasy roleplay, things like that, I think. Um, but generally orcs. and uh, Like, check out the back, the cover of White Dwarf. I have a 121 or 119. There's some very like dark crystal style things in there, really good. Um, so yeah, Paul Bonner, everybody needs to know Paul Bonner. Next, John Blanche, Voodoo Forest. Now you can't get this book anymore. If you can get hold of a copy, you'll probably pay for it unless it's gifted for you. But anything by John Blanche needs to really be uh, studied. Boris Vallejo, Boris Vallejo, I mean, just classic fantasy art, yeah? Get hold of this book because there's some great ideas you can tell for skin tones, but also outer. Um, look at the, the, the human form. Um, 
More John Blanche. Same again. Les Edwards. It, um, did the Hero Quest box art cover thing, which uh, is, is all packed under this at the moment. But but there's that dude. Yeah. Um, go and see. Um, go and see um, Bardic broadcasts for the best thing about Hero Quest because that is just sterling. And we'll tell you something about Les Edwards. The guy's a genius. Did uh, some. Um, what else did he do? Dark Future as well. So you've you've got I I think as as good and I'm being diplomatic here as as good as the more modern illustrators go the old school illustrators for Games Workshop and Fantasy and Sci-Fi definitely are and still yeah they definitely are the masters you know there's some exceptions out there like the Kapinskis Kapinskis are great and Paul Dayton you know but the rest mm, are lacking something you know but I think the difference between those guys. The, like the modern greats, I'm going to call them, the Kapinskis, who are no longer around as much in Games Workshop, as, as not as much as I would like anyway, if at all. Um, but Paul Dayton, they all inform an emotion, a, a tale, the thing I was talking about earlier on with that. Um, Dan Abnett, anything involving Dan Abnett paints a picture in my mind that absolutely excites me. So, um... um do anything Dan Abnett because his words are as good as any of the greatest artists around. Okay, rambled on a lot about this stuff. Do, 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 moving down. Random paints that I use and kind of things I teach on. So this is just random models and things like that. Um, yeah, so here's the model I did Richard Gray style along with a student. So when he comes back, we'll carry on with that. And um, this is somebody who attended my courses. That's always looking for birds. That, who she she's on here um this I painted in 25 minutes um, i'll probably give him away at some point because he needs to go to a home where he'd be appreciated more junk and stuff check out all the games 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 harlequin army base coated about 2000 points the last system of 40k projects i just like of my own just to have out and I'll generally have these out for students when they come round and have a one-to-one -one lesson. I don't want my art and my artwork on display. What I want my artwork for is I want it available for students to hold, to look at, to enjoy, to learn from, and to ask questions about. That's why these things are out. Yeah, I don't, I don't care if they dropped because they have been dropped. I don't care if they dribbled on or whatever it is. They're there for, for, for it to be used, you know, and there to, to help develop people. Um, there's my climbing shoes. <laughs> there's my coat. Here is Darth Maul's head. Here is some printouts of some things. Yeah, I won that. I got the same over there. There's that guy. Say hello. Here is... A historical smorgasbord of history. Some cool scenery bits. Oh, I'll tell you what, on the subject of cool scenery bits. <laughs> well, I'm a township. I am going to build all this. I've got so, so much warmer scenery. It's off the scale, man. Um, there's where I keep my sprays, my laundry, scenery, and a money plant, and a meditation stool. And here's my big ass window. Look at the size of that window. And just get to stand here when it was my bedroom and be all like naked, like da, da, da. I wouldn't, but you know, you can still see in my room pretty easy. So, um, there you go. I have Tommy rambling at you. So, there's 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 the space, there's the space on the game board. <clears throat> okay, so you've all had the, the guided tour. So over the next few weeks, while we're all here, fearing the zombie apocalypse, um, you can ask me whatever you want to ask me. Okay, let's see if there's any questions. Do be do do do. Where is the painting? Um, says Senior SR Terry Bailey. Depends what painting you're talking about. 
good to give everyone a guided tour at the moment. If you've got anything, give us a shout. Um, thanks for the concern, much appreciated, Mr. Billy Evil Sons. Anytime, follow Billy Evil Sons, everybody, by the way. For he's a fantastic painter, multiple Golden Demon winner, an all round stand up geezer. All right, let's see what other questions we've got. Uh, Billy Evil Sons says he's gonna get in touch, right? Yeah, go for it. Just getting back to it after over two years away. Yeah, that's been a while, mate. Um, and you can't paint for shit now. Ah, that's bollocks. It's like riding a bike. I had like a break for two years when I was young and I came back like some kind of genius. And I don't know how. And I surprised myself. I've still kept the model as well. From like the model I'd painted before to the next model, which was Grandmaster Azriel. And that was at the time he was released. And I was working for the sweater shop at the time. And they'd, they'd moved me to Peterborough. Fucking Peterborough, of all places, scumbags. But anyway, yeah, and um, I ended up buying him there and with Ezekiel and what have you when they were released. And I was like, man, somehow I just, like, got better. So be confident, man. You've got this shit. You don't win multiple demons for no reason. And the other thing is, come round here and hang around with me. I will well have you here, not not in a weird way, but, you know, I'll, I'll make you a brew and we'll sit down and do some painting. Chew the cud and all that. Uh, yeah, bolt thrower, that's exactly what it is. Bub, brother Captain Tom, there's enough there to build a full-size bunker. Yes, there is. Rods Mods, Richard Smith, Warp Guy, Skin Skinner, Silver Fox, hello. Everyone, hello. So, who's got some painting talk to go on about? I am looking good, aren't I? I've got to admit, I'm looking at myself now because... I, I I had lost a load of weight recently through um, not look at look not looking after myself properly, and um, I'm doing a lot better at doing that now. So yeah, I can see I'm a bit fuller, a bit fuller, a bit fuller. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Um, cheers. I'm quite enjoying myself. I'm quite enjoying myself. Um, do you like me enforcers mug? Proper dig it. But, uh, Mr. Evil Sons, I uh, <clears throat> I know how you feel. There's, there's times where I feel a break from this hobby and some of the emotional attachments I have to it um, was needed. That's partly why I made this room what it is. This, this room is my way of saying, right, everything goes in here. And if you want to do it, then you step into this room. And if you don't want to do it, then you can just close the door on it. And the idea is that after a year, if um, if that love out of just being surrounded by everything I love about the hobby in the way I love it isn't enough to 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 to, to overcome some of those old emotional attachments I've got, then I will take that break. You know, I will poof disappear. You know. Um, and maybe I will, maybe I won't come back stronger, you know. Merlin's Magic Workshop. I really like the sound of that, and I hope you're one of these five up here, Merlin's Magic Workshop. Is that a bolt throw vinyl behind me? Yes, it is, Mr. Phil. Yes, it is. I've just given the guided tour, mate. You've just missed it all. So, yeah, I've got the original bolt throw vinyl there. Got the original Blanche artwork up there. I know, yeah. Little old me, I can't believe it. It drives me crazy just thinking about it. Like I, I own a piece of history. And it is a piece of history, you know? Do you know why it's a piece of history? It's a piece of history because John gave me a choice of artwork. He said, I want you to have some art. Um... And he said that because I gave him some of my art um, that he originally wanted to buy off me. Um, and I couldn't sell it to him. A man like that, I, I don't want his money. It's not about that. And I didn't even want his artwork, you know. Well, I did want it, but I didn't ask for it, if you will. Um, it, it was just good enough it, payment. I'd said to him, all I will do is spend money. And that doesn't mean a lot to me. Um, but to give him some of my artwork now that is some that is some valuable 
so I, I gave him the artwork and he sent me a load of colour prints of um, a lot of his concept art and some of his pencil work and just said choose anyone you want and you can have it so I ended up choosing Eldrad I was torn I was torn between the Space Wolf stood outside the Fang like that yeah, because I love Space Wolves and I love Eldar. Um, and El and Eldrad. And he, he sent me about 17. I've still got all the colour the colour uh, prints. I've, like, I res colour prints of all his work. Madness. So I've still got all that. And um, he... Um, I, I ended up choosing Eldrad for two reasons. One, I love Eldar. Two... It's a rare piece that he did of somebody else's work because Eldrad was sculpted by Jez Goodwin, who does his own concept work. And it says there, it's not a John Blanche original as far as being Eldrad goes. It says here, and you guys are going to see it backwards, but right there it says John after Jez, 93, copyright, G Dub. This is John drawing somebody else's work. I don't think that's 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 a very 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 rare thing. So that's why I took it, and it's got it's it's even got so it's kind of if fact, let's grab you up. So it's kind of signed twice because it's on it's on it's mounted on some paper as well. So here it says John after Jez ninety five in pencil. 93 sorry but then in ink it's got john a jazz so yeah it's, it's really to me it's really cool and the other thing about this piece so that this you, you're talking to me now as, as as an appreciator of art this piece has noise if you if you can create noise in in an onlooker's head appropriate noise then you've done it and this piece has so much energy and so much noise like this. I can hear all this. I can hear all this. I can hear this. I can hear the distance. Yeah, I can hear. I can hear everything. It's all there, you know. And if you can make art and if you can make your painting a sensory experience just through your uh, brush strokes alone, through what you're trying to do with your strokes then that, that that means something as an artist um, that picture kind of does that and in fact I was saying earlier on in this video that you know that's that's what a lot of the old great artists really did yeah in comparison to some of the new illustrators I use that term illustrators John most certainly is not an illustrator as much as he is a concept artist for Games Workshop and he's a fantastic piece of the history he did that through the medium of of art and expression as opposed to just mere illustration what do I mean by illustration just merely drawing a picture of something you know a computer can draw a picture of something but can it emote a feeling from you yeah can it make you hear something that when there's no sound can it make you feel something when there's nothing to touch or inter interact with you know so it's this is this is what the old hammer days really had oops and and they were built on that stuff you know Warmo well, was built on that stuff those art books up there were built on that stuff the emote you know pictures now generally are just of scenes of violence which is not something i necessarily look up on but it's definitely not something i'll look uh it's not something i'll look down on but it's definitely not something i look up to anybody can draw a picture of a man firing a gun but what context and what emotion can you put behind that you know can you can you create some kind of heroic feeling you know and I, and I think that's the difference between an artist and an illustrator you know and and those things are really important to me as a as a hobbyist and uh, to me the it really needs to be cultivated more and more within our industry across across every company every company um and also not for the because it can be taken too far it can be taken too high far and too too highbrow um which i think to a degree is where maybe the rackham guys confrontation guys they walked that line and then they started to step over it a bit bit 
bit too much you know so yeah it's what what can you say and can you say things with paint and brush strokes that make somebody feel hear and smell and experience John Blanche nails that I hear something interesting about um, uh, John Blanche artwork and me never used to like it and one day I tried to copy it um, because I was all like oh yeah he's, he's all a bit off he's not technically all this that and the other but actually he is it's like Picasso Picasso is an amazing artist but when you look at his later work all weird triangles and stuff like that you go hang on what? it looks like crap but it doesn't because he's so good he got bored of it and he, he deliberately does it that way so you know it's deliberate it's not that it's crap he's doing it deliberately so when you look at a lot of uh, John Blanche artwork if he's making you feel uneasy yeah then he he's, he's doing it on purpose to you that's how good he is so there's a um, there's a inquisitor stood out I can't remember the name of the bloody inquisitor now but my favorite piece by John Blanche is a pencil drawing is there's an inquisitor stood outside of um, a hive yeah um and he's got a little banner bearing next to him like he's got his mouth shown sewn shut and he's got weird mutant feet and what have you and that picture is just there's so much noise in that picture like like you can hear the pipe you can hear the wind you can hear the way the clouds move in the sky you can hear the you can hear what's filling the distance between the character on the page and miles away you've got the hive in the distance you can just hear it all you know and that's a fantastic amount of skill um, so yeah to digress I once then tried to copy some John Blanche's work now if, if he ain't that good and his skill is low standard then my low standard stuff should look as good you'd be greatly mistaken and I was humbled at that point I, I you know I there's a reason you've got the 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 Inquimunda Inquisition twenty eight scale and um, Dark Ages Sigma style. There's a reason there's a Blanchitsu style. It's because a it's fantastic. B it ain't easy. It is a skill. Yeah, because if you just try to paint that way and you don't know what you're doing, you will just produce shit painting. Now bear with me here with that statement because. If you are picking up a brush, all right, you're a great painter because you're you're stepping in the right direction with every brush stroke, all right. So let me let me encourage you there. But at the same time, there is a certain vibe and a certain feel when you've achieved a, a particular objective, and the Blanchitsu style has that objective, yeah, or is an objective, should I say? And the heavy metal, metal style is an objective, and the Rackham confrontation style is an objective, and uh, historical style, and there's something to learn in every single one of these things. Um, so I recommend, with that example, if if you don't like something, just try copying it, and see what you learn. See what you learn. You've got a lot of time to spend indoors with me, you know, and. Um, not like actually indoors, but you know what I'm saying. I I really enjoy doing these. I'm mean, in fact I've not stopped talking for how long. I've not even you guys have not even asked me any questions, so that that would imply. Well, there's only f a few of you in anyway, but that would imply either most of you don't really want to hear what I've got to say, um, or you're just happy listening to me. But if you're not happy listening to me, you'd rather hear something else, like maybe practical about painting. Then give me a shout. You know. I've often thought, Manchester Art Gallery right, has, has got some fantastic pieces in it and I've often thought about doing one of these live streams and, and giving my thoughts on, I'm going to call it criticising art. It's not criticising, it's assessing art. Just in, in, in the way I look at art, because I, I definitely do ruffle some feathers with some of my views, all right? But the reason those feathers are ruffled is because those guys don't have a fucking clue what I actually mean when I say what I say. Does that mean that I've not explained myself properly? Yeah, and sometimes I do it deliberately because if they've already made the mind up that I'm talking shit, then I ain't going to explain to myself to a closed mind, especially one that's a little bit aggressive online, which generally these people are. So, for example, earlier on in my Facebook feed, 
um, not Facebook feed, Instagram feed. I said, art is maths having fun. And some guy said, I don't think so. How? Well, he's already decided that, I, that I'm wrong with his... I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna mention his how. Yeah, the next comment below was, I am a mathematician, it, it, it is what I do, and I agree. Well, ask that guy below me, you know. But how is maths having fun? Well, you know, this entire world is bound by physics. It's as simple as that. And we are bound by those same laws, and we have been since the beginning of the Big Bang. And that is just that. And if we, and it's all maths, every single bit of it is maths. So why do art? Why do art? It's because it's fun and expressive, you know? And we are just a product of maths, of yin and yang coming together, of all that matter and all that space pff, mixing up forever and always. And out you go. And we create all this, this beauty that's up on the wall. This stuff here, this stuff in models, you know? And that Big Bang creates that through us. You know, because we're not in the universe. We're, we're like a part of it. We're a product of it. That thing went boom, 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 created us. And we're, we are in our part of the Big Bang. And we will disappear and on and on and on and on. You know, and we are that Big Bang. We're, we're the stage where the Big Bang gets creative for the sake of it. For the sake of it. Mathematically. And that just fascinates me. That just fascinates me. Jeferia, hello, a newcomer at last. Um, so, so yeah, I get a thumbs up from Magpie. Zlanax. Is that a brain drug or a bowel drug? I'm not too sure. Or is it a lizard man? Is it a lizard man? Um, so good evening to you two newcomers. Um, I'm getting a right little waffle on me tonight. I will post this on YouTube, by the way. Um, so please go and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Because I'm trying to get a thousand followers. I want to do these live streams on YouTube. For two reasons. One, I can have the camera the right way. So when you actually watch this later on YouTube, you will um, you will be able to watch me the right way around. The second reason is, I don't have to upload it. It's there, ready. The third reason is, is these are limited to an hour. Yeah, and if I want to leave this up on Instagram for you to watch, excuse me, I can't upload another one. All right, and so all in all, taking these live streams to YouTube is sensible, but they won't let me do a live stream unless I've got a thousand followers at least. So I need to get way more than a thousand thousand subscribers on YouTube because some people drop off, which is natural. And then they'll just take that right off me again. And, I, and I'm not into that, you know. And I really want, I, I do these out of pleasure. And I do these to help you and I do these to help me. And I really enjoy doing them when I do them. Um, so, yeah, please, please. I mean, if you could share it wherever that I, I'm trying to build these things. You know, I don't get paid for any of this. Mr. Harland, for all those that don't know, Philip Harland there is my longest serving student. And he is a fantastic man. How are you, Mr. Harland? Good evening, dude. You've still not turned up for a lesson. I know we're socially distanced and all that, but you know, now you've got an excuse, but it's not gonna fly. It's not it's not gonna fly. You know. Um but like I was saying earlier on, social distancing is not about being physically in contact with each other, is it? Social distancing is about not connecting on an emotional and social level. And here we are doing such a thing now. In fact, I've never felt closer and more comfortable around more people talking about this stuff. I seem to be on a, uh, I seem to be on a roll tonight. I'm quite enjoying myself. Um, and I've spoken about things I rarely speak about. My views on art, for example. And I've given everybody a, a guided tour. So, Mr. Harland, when you come here, you've got secure parking. So anybody that visits me has got secure 